Yeah, this is a poem. I did not write this, so you know, I'm not, I'm not taking responsibility. A buddy of mine in Florida, Bob Garino, no relation to Pastor Tim, um, he wrote into, we talked about hot dogs a while ago, and he wrote into chat GPT, write me a poem about hot dogs. And this West is West Virginia hot dogs. West Virginia hot dogs. And in the hills of West Virginia, where the roads wind and bend, there's a treat that's known to all, a hot dog that's a friend. It's not your ordinary dog. No, it's something quite unique. With slaw and chili piled high, it's a flavor you must seek. The bun is soft and pillowy. The dog is cooked just right. When you add the toppings, it's a culinary delight. In towns like Huntington and Parkersburg and everywhere in between, people gather around to enjoy a hot dog that's a dream. So next time you're in West Virginia, don't forget to give it a try. The hot dog with slaw and chili will leave you feeling high. That came in less than two seconds. When my buddy put in, write me a poem about West Virginia hot dogs. We're all out of work, buddy. Yep. See, yep. I introduced John to the West Virginia hot dog. And I got to tell you, it's special. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a hot dog ambassador. West Virginia hot dog ambassador. You are. No one talks more about the West Virginia hot dog than you. Thank you. God, I put in my I resume that for that job. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's uh, always the possibility that he'll move on to something else. R.C. Coyle, as in pastor. God One Ministries is with us here. God's in the Park. This has been uh, a very successful enterprise for the last, what, about uh, six, seven years now? Thirteen years. Thirteen? Oh, my with goodness. With the exception of the COVID year when the park was closed, we've been doing this now for well over a decade. That's amazing. Isn't that, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, mean, I think sometimes about when you and I used to do live remotes when I was in the gym business. That was like, what, five years 30, ago? Thirty, thirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two years ago, I think, yeah. is when I met you. Yeah, we were talking about the age spots on the way in. So. <laughs> it's yeah. Aptly, aptly. Yeah, there have been a lot of roads traveled since then, my brother. The road less traveled, for me, for sure. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. All for a reason. Well, you know, we hope so. We hope so. It's funny because, um, you know, we talk about the road less traveled, and, and my road came through federal prison. And uh, as I ministered to people in prison, once God changed my life, you know, they would consistently come to me and they'd say, you know, God's got me here for a purpose. <laughs> and I would say, don't fool yourself. God didn't put you here. You put yourself here just like I did, but God can bust you out. He can take this time and make it into something usable, and he can take you and make you into something usable, but you have to come to that place where you realize you were broken so God can put the pieces back together. How, how do you how do you answer the uh, when you see school shootings, for instance, and you, five six year old kids doesn't have to be in a school. We had a public shooting the other day where a young kid was uh, killed. There was a, a ten year old girl in Washington D.C. who died uh, because some idiot drove by and shot somebody, and a bullet went and hit her. Uh, and people say, "How does God let that happen?" How do you answer that, Randy? Wow. You know, that question is, is the question we all ponder for a lifetime. I, I'm, I'm going to share a story with you, if I can, just real briefly. Uh, I was in a place, a, a deep, dark place, and I was ministering Bible studies and things like that. God had changed my life. And I had a guy step into the cell where I was at, and he was a large guy. <laughs> and he was a guy that when he shut that door, I wasn't sure that I could make a difference if he decided that he was going to make a difference in my life. And he wasn't coming to my Bible studies. And long story short, what happened was he started um, pouring out his heart to me. He said, um, I've had a life of murder and mayhem. And he said, um, I can't get through what I just did. He was there for multiple murders. And he had killed a young girl up in Atlanta. And um, he couldn't live with it. It finally had got to him. Long story short, I ministered to him for a period of time, and then I led him to the Lord. That story ended, and they shipped me to another place, and I was in another place, and it was over a period of time, and I was in the rec yard one day. I was working out with a guy that I'd got to know. And as I got to know him, we, we kind of started sharing ourselves. And as we started sharing, I said to him one day, I said, listen, you really just don't seem like somebody that belongs here. And he started laughing. He said, what about you, white boy? He said, you don't look like you belong here either. <laughs> And he started sharing his story with me, and he had um, living a good life, working, doing the right things, taking care of his family, and his daughter went went south, and she went the wrong road, and she got caught up into drugs, and all of a sudden she got caught up into some drug deals and some 
people up in Atlanta, Georgia. And as he started telling me this story, I started seeing the resemblances. And some of the gang had killed her. And I knew the exact guy that had done it. Now, I couldn't share that with him because I could share that with no one. But as he sat there and he poured out his heart in this situation had derailed his whole life somebody had shot his little baby girl i'm just like lord what do i say what do i do and this man had been in the church you know he had no knew god he knew jesus but his life was just wrapped up in this pain at that point and i said to him brother what if that person that killed your daughter has now given their life to christ and it's changed and he's going to be in heaven with you and he just broke into tears. And all of a sudden, you know, he got to a place where he could receive deliverance and get delivered from the bitterness and from the unforgiveness and from the pain. God is so much bigger than us. I mean, what is the chance that I would see both those people? What's the chance that both those people would be talking to me about their pain? The chances of that are just not natural. They're supernatural. But God cares so much about us that he will reach into our lives in any way that he can to help us from this pain. And I think the only way that I can minister to people that are in the throes of that kind of pain, pain of what we're seeing happen in school shootings and what we're seeing happen all over our country right now at Walmarts and in different places that we just can't even imagine, is that God's never responsible for that. The Bible is specific. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. God said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that's what he wants for us. And we're at a time right now where we're seeing the thief that's working a lot of his work in the earth. But God is greater. You know, I preached this the other week. God is coming right now like a tsunami. His love is like this. We can't fathom God's love because it's like pulling the water out of the ocean with a thimble. Does that make sense? You just can't ever fathom that you'd get the water out with that thimble. But that's the way God's love is. And his love will cover us in the midst of anything. And, and I know that personally because I, I hated God at, at one time. You know, my sister had committed suicide, and she lived in a coma for four and a half years, and she had actually hung herself in a nurse's station of a hospital, local hospital, when she was supposed to be under psychiatric care. And I hated the doctors. I hated the, the, the health care professionals. I hated everybody, and eventually I hated God for that. So when we go through these pains— Although God maybe doesn't like the way we respond or, or even see in like how we react to pain, he's there for us, just waiting until he can get a time where he can get us to listen. For me, it was a deep, dark place before I could listen again, but he was there, and he walked with me through those dark places every single step. I always think of that poem, Footprints, where it says that in the deepest, darkest place in our lives— there's only one set of footprints because that's where he carried us. Well, I'll be honest with you, John, Matt, there was 10 years he carried me every day. There's no way I could have walked through it. But really, every day is like that. Today is like that for me. There's things that come across my table, come across our computer, come across our path that we just don't have a clue how to deal with. So like with some of these things like these school shootings and people walking into churches and blowing away a Bible group, when we go in and minister to these people, how do we do it? It's by the help of Holy Spirit, the help of God himself. He gives you those directives as you get in the situation. And there's just no other way to do it but to listen to him. And um, I remember we had an all-night prayer vigil about five years ago. And there was a lady at that when we were praying around the circle. And we got to the place where she says, I want you to pray that I die. And she begins to share her story. And she said, you know, my husband left me. We've been married for over 40 years. He's turned the children against me. He took all my money. He's taken my home. I have nothing. And she was a Christian. And she said, I want to die. Well, how do you pray for that? You just, you have to seek God's help. And we say, we were looking for God that night. We asked God to help us to help this lady. And by the end of the night at three in the morning, she was praying for her husband and she was back in her right mind wanting to live again and she doesn't come to our church every week but she drops in every now and then just to say hello and she's doing well that's great news i guess the answer is but god we're in that moment in the united states but god it's going to take him to fix this 
and we know it. God's in the Park, the 13th year of this, as uh, Randy just said a moment ago. And uh, for this year, it's Friday, May 26th, and Saturday, May 27th. What do you have going on this uh, weekend? Well, this year's going to be a lot different than, than most years. We are setting this up totally different. We're setting up the stands, the stage, the sound, everything, so it's more intimate. Uh, actually, where we usually perform for the bleachers and for the park, we're setting up tables and chairs there and allowing people to set in the stage and eat. So they're, they're going to be the entertainment. <laughs> and then we're setting the stage up behind that so that the music and, and really, instead of us preaching or anything like that, it's just going to be people testifying, telling stories like I just told about their lives and about how their life has been affected by different circumstances and situations and how God changed that for them. And uh, it's going to be more intimate. There's going to be people there. Uh, we've got, like, um, I was talking to Matt for the show, the pony rides, the, mm-hmm. the petting zoo, the dunk tank, bouncy house, free swimming for the kids, all kinds of things going on. We're going to have, hopefully, a fire truck, a police car, you know, so that those departments that are admirable people doing admirable work for our community can breathe into the next generations. All kinds of fun things. Uh, free food. That's the best kind. Uh, yeah, and we have a food, we have a clothing closet that is amazing. Sister Marlene comes and she sets up like all these trucks and gives clothes away to all the people that don't have them. We did this in the square. You know, I was here, I guess, a month or so ago, and we did uh, Easter in the square. Passover Sunday was in the square, and we fed the homeless, and, and anybody came and gave clothes away, and it was an amazing opportunity, amazing time. John Gilstrap. <clears throat> I'm really struck by your stories, and and. Uh, and I so greatly admire what you do. I don't, I'm not that guy. I, I don't know. <clears throat> My son was at Virginia Tech during the Virginia Tech shooting. He's fine. He lost some friends, but he's fine. And at that time, it occurred to me, and I kind of flash back to this now that you're talking about this. Um, I don't know how people get past the anger. Yeah. I mean, just, and not anger at, god necessarily it's anger at the the sob who killed my kid yes and and that's toxic you know that it's toxic and you you can you can pray you can do all kinds of things but at the end of the day that sob killed your kid yeah. and i don't know i i, I there's not really a question here i just kind of was, was thinking about this i'm not that guy i don't think i could get past the anger but yet you have to get past the anger because you have to continue to live so the work that you do in counseling others and somehow pushing or pulling or leading or baiting or goading people to cross that line and and find peace again, that just means an awful lot to an awful lot of people. Well, I appreciate you. You know, my nephew was down there and I was in prison that day Mm. and I was just uh, in panic and he actually went for the door that he was in. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, so, you know, these things touch us. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, John, just like you said, I'm not that guy. Brother, I'm not either. I- I'm candid with you. I- I'm not either. I-, I couldn't get past the pain. And and Rob will be the first one to tell you that I lived a- I lived life angry. I mean, I, I turned it into a-, a bodybuilding and a powerlifting career and a, and a fitness empire. But it-, it-, it crumbled because it was built on anger and rage and wrath. And it was destroying me day by day. And it was like, that's what we try to help people see is no matter what has been done to you, if we take that in and we allow those spirits to manifest on us and in us and through us, eventually it's going to be the end of you. And and your life wasn't meant to be that way. So we can't let that evil take us over and magnify itself to a place where we don't end it. You know, we take our anger out on the enemy, you know, on what we feel is the real culprit, the devil himself. And, and we just minister to people in that way and try to help them put their life back in a place where they're living their best life that the Lord has ordained for them. And it's hard for a lot of people. I mean, sometimes it takes a huge amount of counseling. And for me, it took a lot of years of doing the wrong things. But the problem is, when you get into that kind of a life, it not only hurts you, it hurts others around you. You know, when we get into places like with me, places of, of sin that I was involved in, it not only derailed me, but because I was a leader, because I was involved in a lot of different business entities and somewhat of a celebrity, it took a lot of people down with me. And when I look back on those days, that's the things 
that I'm the most remorseful about is the people that got affected by my anger. And that's why we try to help people, you know, not be that man, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And we know that we weren't either. That just like you said, I'm not that man. I wasn't either. But Jesus carried that burden and helped me to be released from that. Mr. Harvey. It, on the flyer, it says uh, dunk tank. Is that, is that a sneaky way to baptize people? <laughs> <laughs> the prosecutor wants to know. <laughs> Oh, we this illegally wait, baptized. Wait, wait, wait a minute. There, there's not any paperwork waiting for me on this. Is That's there? a good question. I like that angle you're working on. <laughs> he, he never answered. <laughs> Listen, well, you know why? I'm thinking that this is pretty good, and yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to work this into the park thing. <laughs> this is a good, that's a good plan, actually, if you're going to try to baptize people. But you know, what we're saying we're doing a lot of foot ministry this year, and I'm thinking, wow, what a great way to, to baptize people. Yep. Um, no, actually, we're doing baptisms, but they're at the pool. Um, but no, the dunk tank is legit. That, that, and, that, and that was where I was going to go. It was like, like there will obviously be people there that if 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 a spark is struck in someone, that they'll be able to help guide them to maybe their next level in their relationship with God. Yes, and you know, Matt, the the biggest thing that God's in the park is about is relationship. And I have to be candid with you. We've done this for 13 years and we're not even close to perfecting it yet. We're oh, still yeah, we're You hadn't st thought of the baptism angle for us. <laughs> no, no, it's obvious, you know. Uh he hasn't done this ever and and he's already, you know, trying to derail yeah. me and, and get me back in the right direction. But uh John John said something the last time we were on the air. He said well, I said I'm a writer and he's written like hundreds of books and I've written like two. <laughs> he said you're a rookie. I think I'm a rookie at the Gods of the Park too because we're still not where we want to be. But one of the things we felt like when we look back on the gods in the parks, we've led a lot of people to Christ. You know, this station's been influential. There's a couple of years you guys even televised the yeah. different gods in the parks. So every time we give an altar call, you know, like some of those events that they televised, we saw hundreds of people saved. But what we feel like we missed it is in the one on one because then you lost touch with them afterwards. We didn't then fellowship. We didn't then get in life with them. We didn't disciple them, which is a commission by the Lord. So we're really trying to get more involved right now, like in foot ministry. And, foot, and what I mean by that is not like ramming the Bible down somebody's throat. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really just kind of meeting people where you were talking, John, mm -hmm. where they're at. Like if they say, hey, I'm not that man. So we understand <laughs> we're not either. Um, but this is how we got the help we needed. This is where we found it. We found it in Jesus Christ. So we're trying to really minister to people just what has got us through life. And what not only has got us through life, but we don't have this figured out yet. We're trying to figure it out every day. And we need the Lord's help to get there each day. So what we say to people is, hey, me too. I'm going through just like you are, and some days I hit it by the grace of God, and some days I miss it by the grace of me, and let's figure it out together. And have fun while you're doing it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and this is a tremendously fun day. Here's the situation. When we were in the square just last month, I stood back at the end of the day, and I was looking around. You know, there was a lot of homeless people. There was a lot of people that, that, that were fed and clothed that, that, you know, wouldn't have had Easter any other way. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, this is what I would do if I was here. And I thought, yeah, we did okay today. Because the lost, the forgotten, those that have been cast aside, everybody can come together. It's not just those that don't have, it's those that do have. And we can come together in a park yeah. and eat hot dogs. And, and our hot dogs won't be that one. <laughs> I don't want to set anybody up for, for um, disappointment. But um, as you were reading that about the hot dogs, I was thinking, wow, I w wonder if we could do that. Could we call somebody from Huntington and see if we can get some of those hot dogs? That sounded pretty but good. Don't come expecting that. Um, ours are a little more basic than that one. But, you know, serving a meal, breaking bread together, and just chatting. That is Friday, May the 26th, and that'll go from 3 until 8 at War Memorial Park with free food from 3 until 6. And then on Saturday, the next day, May 27th, from 1 to 6 with free food from 1 to 4. Uh, did you want to, we've got about a minute left, Randy. Did you want to thank any donors for the free food and whatever? Yes, and, and also um, Sunday we have a service at, at 2. Sunday We're going to have church at service two. at 2. And I just, I want to praise God for the Butler family. 
and for Integrity Mortgage, our sponsors that help us put this on, and all of our God One Business Association. If people are out there, if they want to go to our website, GodOneMinistries.net, they can see those and that's people. That's W-O-N. Yes, sir. Thank you. And those people are really influential in giving us resources to be on the air, to do what we do. If it wasn't the Butler family, we're not here able to do it for Integrity Mortgage and those kind of people. So we thank God for them. Good to see you again, And my thank brother. God for you guys. Thank you, Rob, John, Matt, for all that you all do as well. Appreciate you. Love you guys. Randy Coyle and uh, God One Ministries at 957.